<sighs> All right, I've got a pretty good chill going on. About minus 14 exactly, actually. Every year, many, many people go out on day excursions in the winter time in the hopes of coming back at night. But sometimes, and it can happen to anyone really, uh, sometimes you, you get turned around, you get lost, and you just don't make it back. And what you bring in your day pack can make a really big difference in making your night comfortable if you have to anchor in first, but also just in surviving in general. And there's always been a bit of a debate as to what you should pack in your day bag. Well, today, that's what we're here to see is if what you bring in your day bag can actually save your life. I think I found a spot. Let's see. It's a lot harder to find a spot where you're going to crawl into, honestly. I've been looking for, you know, hemlocks or spruce trees or fir trees to kind of crawl under, but they're all either super tall and there's really no coverage underneath them or they're too small. But I have a bit of a flat ground here. And I'm going to try to see if I can get this a little nice and cozy. I feel like... I'm somewhat protected above. Now, I know that this whole pack seems rather big and it probably looks like I have everything I need to survive pretty comfortably out here tonight, but realistically speaking, I brought what I usually bring on my day hikes when I go out in the mountains of the Adirondack. But really what I'm here today is to try out some of the more minimalistic survival gear that people go out with and uh, see how far I can make it in the night before I start pulling out what I usually bring. Probably one of the first piece of gear that most people will agree to bring is some kind of ground insulation. And one of the most common one that people will bring with them is just a closed cell foam like this, uh, where you can just basically insulate yourself from the ground because the ground is what's gonna kill you. And another thing is a lot of people would think that you'd go out there and just start building a shelter. And maybe tonight I could try to do a lot of this, but I'm trying to keep this realistic. If you've been out in the mountains for eight hours straight, 10 hours straight, hiking from sun up to sundown, you're at a point where you've admitted that you're lost and you're just gonna hunker in for the night, you probably don't have the energy that it takes to collect firewood and to make a shelter. And especially if you don't bring any tools to process wood, maybe I got injured. And that's a big thing too. A lot of the times it's because people get injured along the way. I was hoping to have a bit more of overhead coverage, but that's the best I could find for now. All right, so maybe the first thing I can do right now is kind of go through what I have in my bag so I can show you what I bring on my day trips with me, what's in my day pack. So at the top here in the brain, I've got, you know, my regular, poop kit, I would have a first aid kit. And in this first aid kit, I always have a fire starting system of some sort. So in this case, I have a lighter. And also up here, I have this emergency bivy. And that's really what I came out here to test out tonight. Most people leave with an emergency bivy and some kind of closed cell foam pad like this. And we're gonna be testing out how long I can last only with this. Of course, I have what I'm wearing. So I have a fleece mid-layer jacket. I've got another fleece kind of like base layer and my regular synthetic base layers here. I've got my insulated um, active wear pants uh, with a pair of long johns, synthetic long johns as well. And of course, my shell here. I would never go out myself without my big puffy jacket, which I think is gonna come in handy eventually. You never know when you, know, you might wanna stop for a quick bite or a lunch and you don't wanna get cold, so I always pack mine. Also with me, a number of years ago, I severely frostbit six out of my 10 toes on a winter backpacking trips in the Adirondacks, so I always bring an extra pair of wool socks in case I just need to swap my socks. Lastly in here, uh, most of what's in the middle here, it's all camera gear, so just like electronics for the camera, a camera bag here, but I do have in there also somewhere my shell pants, are just a Gore-Tex pants to put over top of this in case it gets too windy. I have a little bit of water. So like I said, if I've been out all day long, I probably drank most of my water. So I have 200 milliliters of water left. I have a cliff bar right here, uh, my mittens, 
And the last two items are kind of the items that are often enough talked about as to whether you should bring it or not. And that is my winter sleeping bag and my Thermrest X-Term sleeping pad. But today I'm gonna sacrifice my body for science and I'm gonna test out what most people bring, which is an emergency bivy or some kind of mallard or space blanket to keep themselves warm. And we're gonna see if at the temperatures we're gonna hit tonight, which should be around minus 14 degrees Celsius, if this would be enough to keep me, not necessarily comfortable, but to make me, allow me to survive. The number one tip I give people who's worried about being cold winter camping is make sure that you eat a large meal before going to bed. Well, for me tonight, it's this. I actually skip dinner at home just to try to make it a bit more realistic. I know there's no way for you to actually double check if that's true or not, but I actually did. And all I have for tonight is this cliff bar and about 200 milliliters of water that I'm just gonna chug after just to rehydrate myself and wow, cliff bars suck. <laughs> They're so overrated. Oh my God. All right, so the temperature so far is I want to say minus 11 and I'm I'm excited to see if this if this baby can do its job at that temperature. I don't exactly know how this is going to go down but I can almost guarantee you that this is going to suck. Good night. Ugh. All right, I'm calling it been two hours I've been in here and I've got a pretty good chill going on and I don't want this to get uh, dangerous especially there's no reason for it because I have my own uh, I have my sleeping bag and, and proper sleeping pad to do this it's let's see About minus 14 exactly, actually. And I lasted exactly two hours. <sighs> okay. Let's get, the, let's get the real setup now. One hour. <sighs> Back to sleep. Good morning. It's six o'clock and temperature is close to minus 17. Mm. Oh, well, am I ever glad I had my sleeping bag and my sleeping pad yesterday? Because after the first two hours of spending in that emergency bivy, I was so chilled to the bone. I don't know what it would have looked like this morning after spending another five hours in there. I know that none of this is really scientific and I'm not saying that I would have necessarily died by staying in that in that emergency bivy all night long, but to me that's just proof that every time I go out on my day trips out in the mountains to hike, I'm always gonna bring my sleeping bag and my and my sleeping pad because if you have to spend a night outside, yeah, sure, maybe you can survive and you won't die with an emergency bivy, but if you have to get up the next day and kind of find your way out again, and you might as well get a little bit of rest and a sleeping bag and a, and a sleeping pad will make a big, big difference, even if you're sleeping under the stars like I did today. Bit of a different video this week, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And uh, next time you go out in the winter time, Maybe you'll rethink your day pack a little bit in case something happens. Peace, everybody.